Good morning, everybody. Um, today is probably the last episode of season two. Um, I did a little shorter this time, but I, it seemed like I had a longer episode, so I figured let's just do eight, and then I can kind of regroup and maybe do like a season three with this cookbook still, or season three could be the next cookbook. But I am definitely um, planning another season, so don't worry. I love doing my podcast, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so um, I've realized that on the other episodes, I know on season one, I said it after every episode. It probably got annoying. But I realized that I haven't said it a lot in the season two episodes. And so I just wanted to remind everybody that I do have an email address for my podcast. You can email in with questions, um, recipes you could share, you want me to share on the podcast, um, just anything. I like to hear everybody's opinions, and it's been going really good. So the email for that, it's all together, lowercase, everyday living, recipes with love at gmail.com. So please, if you have any questions or just want to, you know, just say, hey, I love your podcast, you can email in. I definitely check my email every day, so I am looking forward to hearing from everybody. So today's episode is a little different. I don't think I've ever shared these kind of recipes before. And some people have mixed feelings about this, these kind of recipes. I know I do. Um, they're fish. Now, I used to like fish. I used to, when I was a kid, um, my mom would buy those fish sticks. I can't remember what brand they were. And I would eat them, not knowing it was fish, for a long time. And so I did eat those. But now that I'm an adult and I realize that I don't really like them, um, I don't like them. I don't like any kind of fish, any fish sticks. Um, the fish that we're going to talk about today, I have never tried in anything because I don't like it. Um, but I do like tuna. I don't know if that counts. Um, I never liked tuna as a kid. Isn't that weird how it works? So I never liked tuna, but now I do. Sometimes when I'm craving tuna, I'll mix it with macaroni and cheese. I'll put it on my salads. I like spinach. And, um, it's really good. Um, that's the only one though. Now, most people have their own opinions on fish. Me personally, I don't think I could eat um, the type of fish we're talking about today in recipes is salmon. Never tried it. I don't know if I could ever try it. I don't know. Just the, the smell of fish, just I can't do it. Sometimes the consistency in those fish sticks were just, I couldn't do it. Um, but I have about three three or four recipes that I'm going to share with you today with salmon in it. Now there might be one with, um, I like shrimp too for seafood. Um, I might share a shrimp recipe or a tuna recipe cause I like both of those, but <clears throat> I don't like, <laughs> I just can't do it. But I thought for the fish lovers, we're going to do something different today and we're going to share salmon recipes. How do you say it? Salmon? I think that's how you say it, but if I mispronounce it, I'm so sorry. So when I was looking through the fish kind of part of the cookbook, um, I was like, well, what do I pick? Because I don't know what is unique for that because I've never cooked with it. I know it's super healthy for you. And I know with fish, you can only have a certain amount because there's mercury in it. Um, so I'm like, well, what recipes do I pick for this? And I hope I picked some unique ones. If I didn't, I'm sorry. I don't know much about fish, but I tried. <clears throat> so the first one is called barbecued Alaskan salmon. I really don't know what the difference is between Alaskan salmon and salmon. Um, if anybody wants to educate us or me, I guess, um, <laughs> Feel free to comment below on what the difference is. But this one says Alaskan, so whatever that means. <clears throat> and I thought it looked a little, 
unique. So I picked it. And so we're going to start with that. And I think I'm just going to repeat all these twice today. I know on the last episode, people were kind of confused. Like, why are you not repeating? But sometimes when it's a short, simple recipe, I don't repeat it. So barbecued Alaskan salmon. I hope I'm saying that right. Two tablespoons of butter or margarine. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. One to two garlic cloves minced. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Two teaspoons of soy sauce. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And four salmon steaks, one inch thick. I didn't know that they made like steaks. (laughs) I don't know. I'm just reading it because the fish lovers know what they're talking about. I sure don't, but I'm here to share. So in a small saucepan, combine the first six ingredients, cook and stir until sugar is dissolved. Meanwhile, you grill the salmon covered over medium hot heat for five minutes. Turn salmon, baste with the butter sauce, grill for seven to nine minutes, Longer turning and basting occasionally, or until the salmon flakes easily with a fork. It makes four servings. So this was kind of more of a simple one because you just put the, you put all this stuff on there for a marinade, basically. <clears throat> and you let it set on the fish and you just put it on the grill. And so I don't think I'm going to repeat that one, but it seems like. The stuff they're putting on here, I don't know if it really, maybe it does make a barbecue, but I'm like, well, how is it barbecued? I don't know. It must, it must just give it a barbecued flavor. I don't know how to flavor fish. I'm sure it's tricky, but that is that one. So the next one, and I didn't repeat that because it's a grill one. All you do is marinate it and cook it on the grill. Or I guess you could cook it in a pan. (laughs) Um, this next one is going to be a pecan crusted salmon. Now this one I will be repeating because it has long instructions. <laughs> so for this recipe, you're going to need four salmon fillets, about six ounces each. One cup of pecans, finely chopped. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. A fourth a cup of brown sugar packed. Two teaspoons of seasoned salt two teaspoons of pepper, and three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Place salmon fillets in a large, resealable plastic bag. Add milk. So you must just add some milk to it. I don't know how much you add. Let stand for 10 minutes and drain. In a shallow bowl, combine the pecans, flour, brown sugar, seasoned salt, and pepper. Coat fillets with pecan mixture gently pressing into the fish. In a large skillet, brown salmon in all, on all, (laughs) hold on, let me restart. Brown salmon in oil over medium high heat. Transfer to a baking sheet. You bake at 400 degrees for eight to 10 minutes or until fish flakes easily with a fork. This one makes four servings. So I I think if I was a fish lover and I liked fish and salmon, I might try that one because I don't like barbecue sauce. But the pecan crusted one sounds pretty good. Um, I just don't know if I can stand the, the, the texture and the taste of it because I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> and I've heard that salmon has like a distinct flavor and I just don't think I could do it. So. We're going to repeat that one one more time. Pecan crusted salmon. Four salmon fillets, about six ounces each. One cup of pecans, finely shredded, or finely chopped, sorry, not shredded. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. A fourth a cup of brown sugar packed. Two teaspoons of seasoned salt. Two teaspoons of pepper. Three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Place salmon fillets in a large, resealable plastic bag, and you add some milk. Let stand for 10 minutes and drain. In a shallow bowl, combine the pecans, flour, brown sugar, 
seasoned salt, and pepper. Coat fillets with pecan mixture, gently pressing into the fish. In a large skillet, brown salmon and oil over medium-high heat. Transfer to a baking sheet. Bake at 400 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes or until fish flakes easily with a fork. This makes four servings. So that is all the salmon ones I'm going to share. But this last one I really wanted to share because I'm going to turn my page. So sorry about the noise. Um, This one I really wanted to share because I know a lot of people that are fish lovers love Long John Silver's. And the batter to their fish and how they fry it in the, it, that their batter is really good. I really like their chicken. And their shrimp is okay, but I like their chicken and the little crumbs you get to eat <laughs> at the end of your box. That was my favorite part, guys. I can't be the only one. Tell me below if that was your favorite part. Getting the little crumbs that they put in the bottom of your box. <laughs> they were so good. Anyway. So I found um, a recipe for Long John Silver's fish. So I don't know if it even tastes like it or not. I'm not trying it. But for the fish lovers that love it, I will share it. Now, this recipe is pretty simple, but I will repeat it. For the Long John Silver's fish, you're going to need two-thirds cup of flour, a fourth a cup of cornstarch, a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one egg beaten, three-fourths cup of cold water, and fish fillets. Combine flour, cornstarch, baking powder, and salt. Set aside. Mix egg and cold water in a separate dish. Add to flour mixture and mix well. Dip Fish fillets into butter and cook in deep fat fryer until golden brown. That sounds super good. I probably could do that with the chicken fillets, right? I don't know if they make chicken fillets. I'm just saying, for people that don't like the fish, I might try this breading with some chicken. So one more time for Long John Silver's fish. You need two-thirds cup of flour, a fourth a cup of cornstarch, a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one egg beaten, three-fourths cup of cold water, and fish fillets. Combine flour, cornstarch, baking powder, and salt. Set aside, mix egg and cold water in a separate dish. Add to your flour mixture and mix well. Dip fish fillets into batter and cook in deep fat fryer until golden brown. So that is that one. Now for the last one, I thought about sharing, sorry, I'm turning my pages. I thought about sharing a tuna one. Um, I don't know these terms for fish, but I'm trying to figure out what would be the best to share. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this, but how do you pronounce this kind of fish. H-A-D-D-O-C-K. Haddock. <laughs> There's one for spicy haddock, if I'm saying it correctly. Um, <clears throat> I could do that one. Or there's a tuna burgers. How about this? We'll just share both of them. So the spicy haddock. I don't know if I'm saying that right, so I'm sorry for the fish lovers out there that know. <laughs> um, I'll just share that. So for that one, you need two pounds of fresh or frozen haddock fillets thawed. One fourth ounce can of chopped green chilies. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One teaspoon of paprika. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of chili powder, dash hot pepper sauce. <clears throat> so for the directions, you have to place the fillets in a 13 by 9 by 2 inch baking dish that has been covered with nonstick cooking spray. Combine remaining ingredients, spoon over fish, bake uncovered at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes, or until fish flakes easily with a fork. 
This makes eight servings. <clears throat> now that one, it had like a diabetic thing at the end, but I don't know. So diabetic exchanges, three very lean meat, half vegetable. I don't know. That must just be if you're diabetic or something. I'm not diabetic, so I don't know the terms. Now, the next one I'm going to um, share is a tuna one. And I'm trying to figure out which one I want to share. Um, there is a tuna alfredo that looks really good. That looks really good, actually. The rest of these are, let's see. I really wasn't prepared for this episode yet. I had some idea of what I was sharing, but I need one more. Just one more good one. Um, let's see. Uh, we could share a shrimp crolet. <laughs> it's spelled C-R-E-O-L-E, -E, and I don't know how to say it, but <clears throat> let's see. Well, I'll just share the tuna burgers, um, and then that'll be it for season two, guys. Okay, so tuna burgers. You need one seven-ounce can of tuna drained, one cup of celery chopped, half a cup of yellow cheese diced, one small onion minced, a fourth a cup of mayonnaise, salt and pepper to taste, and six hamburger buns. Mix in a bowl tuna, celery, cheese, onion, mayonnaise, salt, and pepper. Split and butter hamburger buns. Fill buns with tuna mixture. Heat in paper bag on baking sheet at 350 for 15 minutes. So that is the tuna burgers. Now, I don't like mayonnaise, so I would not like that one. But I do like some tuna and stuff if I just put it in what I like. I don't like tuna um casseroles or anything because usually they have things in it I don't like or like the tuna sandwiches because they mix the tuna with like I think it's mayonnaise anyway I don't like any of that but if I'm just getting a, a package of tuna and putting it in what I like I like it so I'm sorry if it's a shorter episode with the recipes but I tried to do this season I tried to do more of a variety of different kinds of recipes. Now the next section is the casseroles, but I'm not going to get to that this time. I'll have to save that for season three, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, but um, just another quote from Martin Luther King Jr. to end our season two. The time is always right to do what is right. And that's from Martin Luther King Jr. So I am so happy that you guys joined me for my season two of my podcast, which is on Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, it's just all, everything. It's everyday living recipes with love. That's what my Facebook page is and my YouTube and my um, Spotify. You just search that. So I'm really thankful for all of you that listen, and I will see you guys when I premiere season three. Thank you so much. 